Welcome back to Success Today. I'm Bob Guinea. Now, joining me today, David Strauss. David, I have been loving talking with you in the break. Uh, such a fascinating story. I, uh, author, two-time author, speaker. You go around the country speaking as well. Uh, results coach. You have a new project you're working on called Giggle Yoga, which we'll get to as well. Uh -huh. uh, but I think our viewers would love to hear what got you to this point. What was the motivating thing that happened in your life that actually uh, has allowed us to be sitting here together today? Well, you know, seven years ago, I received an incredible gift. It didn't look like a gift at the time, but I was hiking in Chaco Canyon, New Mexico, which is one of the most beautiful collections of ancient Anasazi ruins. And while I was walking along a rock formation, a rock just came right off the cliff, never saw it coming, whacked me in the head, knocked me out, and then I woke up a short time after with an open head injury, concussion, bleeding out. And I really had no idea what happened to me at the time. And it turned into a self-rescue through the desert. And very transformational experience. It wasn't the rock hitting me in the head that changed my life. Right. It was that walk through the desert, the desert of just being with me, myself, and I. I've never been that present in my entire life. You know, we go through life wanting to blame people for circumstances and have other people take responsibility for our life. It was the first time in my life I couldn't blame anybody for anything, right. and I had to take 100% personal responsibility for every step I took. It was several miles, and I drove 80 miles to the emergency room. Yeah, I think, I think you meant, so, you, so you're working in real estate, uh, the market crashes, all this stuff's going yeah. on in your life, so you take a, a long hike. Five, well, how, how long of a walk was it on your own with an with a open head? Close to five miles. Five yeah. mile hike, yeah. then an 80 mile drive, yeah. all by yourself, no yes. one to talk to except you. Yeah. I could imagine that was a real sobering moment. Yeah, adrenaline is a beautiful thing. Oh yeah, yeah I'm sure. <laughs> you, probably, you probably didn't even know it was hurting until you uh, arrived yeah. at the hospital. I but it brought some powerful lessons to my life. It taught me the power of gratitude. And it also taught me the power of personal responsibility. You know, we can't really change our life until we take 100% responsibility for what we have done with our life. Sure. So even when we've had difficult times in our life, uh, we decide what things mean to us. Yeah. We decide the meaning itself. And that taught me those lessons. Well, I, I think it's interesting, too. I mean, it's it, it, a little fascinating. Like I'm looking at the titles of, of your book, Footsteps After the Fall. Yeah. I, I would imagine that was something that probably right after, was it something you wrote right afterwards, or was it something that you took some time to think about and then got into the... I did a lot of journaling while I was recovering, which took several years, and then one day it just kind of hit me that, you know, that was my title. I actually came with the title first because, mm -hmm. you know, I had to follow my footsteps in the sand backwards. That was how I got out because I really didn't know where I was. Well, plus you were concussed, I would imagine. Yes. So, yeah, not thinking so straight either. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> <laughs> and what's been the response to, to, to Footsteps After the Fall? Have people just really embraced it? Yeah, I've had a really powerful and tremendous response from people who are, I, I tend to attract people that are in a point in their life where they're ready to get new results in a different area in their life, and they just want to leverage someone else's story. They, they want to see someone else's courage or someone else that went through hard times but turned those hard times into something good. Yeah. And so I attract those types of people that are really open to learning. Well, I love that you call yourself a results coach. Yeah. Uh, you know, you, you hear the term life coach thrown around quite a bit. You call yourself a results coach. How, how, where did you arrive at that title and why the, why the difference between the two? For me, a results coach really reflected what I was going through in my own life. I, you know, I wasn't looking for coaching for my entire life. I wanted to get some specific results in my life. I wanted to first and foremost, learn how to love myself on a true and deep level, because mm -hmm. on that day I realized I didn't. But also I want to know the secret to happiness, and that's one of the things that I talk about in my new book, Dancing with Vampires. And so I wanted very specific results in my life, and, I, and I, it made sense to me to become a targeted coach, not a general coach. Right, so a little, something a little more specific. Yeah. And then I, from what I understand, we got a little puppy that uh, has been an inspiration to you as well. Yeah, so I've been really fortunate to adopt this beautiful dog. It's a Stabehoon. It's one of the top five rarest breeds in the world, and her name is Finley. And it's a cute name. Yeah, her Facebook page <laughs> is Finley Kisses, and it's, she's a, just a beautiful dog. And she taught me what it's like to be young again and new again and have a fresh view of life and to be teachable because puppies are so eager to learn and grow and love, and, and it brought that back into my heart, which I really wanted and needed. So yeah. it's been a great addition to my life. I'm, I'm a dog lover too, so yeah. believe me, I, I, yeah. I, I, I'm going to be on Finley Kisses tonight saying, hey, what's up? <laughs> uh, now, okay, I, I know you've probably had so many stories, and, and, and I'd love to hear a, a couple, but I also want to get to the project real quick. But if you had a success story that you could tell me from something that you know for a fact, that sharing your story, sharing your moments, and sharing your transformation as a results coach uh, that you could share with our viewers, what would it be? I would say the story would be to really look at the people that you surround yourself with on a daily basis and make sure you're surrounded with people that help you to learn and grow and become a better person. And that can be shown up in a lot of different stories. But for me, that's like one of the most important lessons is surround yourself with quality people that mm -hmm. you can, that'll help you to learn and grow and also to live with gratitude and forgiveness. 
Yeah. And have, have, you, have you actually taught in a situation that you can tell us about where you've taken someone from a dark place to learning what you've gone through and they've used your stories and your experiences to get to a better place in their own life? Yes, I do have a personal friend who read my book several times and uh, he was so inspired by the book and uh, he was actually working in the mortgage business. Mm -hmm. Well, I've worked in that industry myself. I know the mortgage industry can be, can be tough, but, but tell us about his story. So he, uh, he read my book and he was not really enjoying the business as much as he wants to and he had a lot of weight to lose. He wasn't as healthy as he wanted to be. And so he was actually a close friend of mine who helped me kind of readjust socially to society when I can't, you know, part of my recovery. Sure. And uh, I helped him through the example of my own life and through some learning and teaching that we did together to lose the weight that he was looking for, but more importantly, to get in touch with his personal passion for life. That's great. You know, and it was really nice to see someone who embraced my book and can transfer that into his own life. Because that's yeah. really what I want. That's what my whole project is about. Sure, learning from your experiences and, and yeah. going through the, the things that you went through so they don't have to go to that dark place, right? Yeah. I met a, a gentleman at the health club that I belong to in Boulder, Colorado, a Colorado Athletic Club. And we were just talking in the sauna with he and his son and told him about my book. And I ended up giving him a copy. And several months later, he called me back and you know, found me through Facebook, got in touch with me. And he said that uh, reading your book completely changed my relationship with my wife. It changed my relationship with my kids. I've told my men's group about it, and we'd love you to come out and speak with us in Florida. Oh, that's great. So, yeah, just uh, little things like that How are beautiful. Perfect. Well, that's got to feel really good. Yeah, it feels really good. You mentioned uh, that volleyball was a big, uh, like playing sports was a big thing for you, too. Yeah, so part of my recovery was I really needed to be re-socialized, and I didn't want to do things that I'd already done in other sport, you know, other parts of my life, other sports that I've done. And I wanted to try something completely different that would introduce me to people in a, just on a large scale. And I discovered volleyball. And you know, you hear about volleyball, but volleyball is one of the most fun, playful, sexy party sports I've ever seen in my entire life. And in Colorado, it's huge. There's indoor volleyball, there's sand volleyball, there's grass, there's mountain tournaments. And I just jumped in full steam about a year and a half ago. And I found my tribe of people that I want to socialize with. And it's made a huge difference in my life. And it's been great for my little puppy family. She loves volleyball and volleyball players. <laughs> in general. <laughs> yeah, in general. <laughs> Very social, yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah, so it's, you know, got to find your tribe in life that keeps you happy. Now, also, we mentioned something earlier, and I want to hit on it really quickly. Uh, your new project yeah. called the, the Giggle Yoga Project. Yes. And I love doing yoga. I, I've, I've heard of hot yoga. I've uh -huh. heard of... You know, uh, different types of yoga. I've never heard of giggle yoga. Can you explain <laughs> that to me? Absolutely. <laughs> so giggle yoga for me is it's the it's the lifestyle and of living with gratitude and self responsibility and living from your heart. So a lot of people go through life and they feel inflexible, like they're physically inflexible and they don't feel like they can go practice yoga because right. they're either intimidated by the movements or they don't feel like they're healthy or fit. My philosophy is that you have to loosen up your heart first. And when you loosen up your heart and your mind and you start taking responsibility for your life, everything else falls into place naturally. And so Giggle Yoga is actually an emotional practice and for some a spiritual practice. Sure. But the Giggle Yoga project is about leveraging my personal story and other people who have also had transformational experiences and teaching people how to live with lightness of heart and teach them how to giggle. You know, for me, a giggle moment is like when something falls apart in your life and it's like, it's just things are in pieces everywhere, and you have that moment of clarity, and you think, wow, I caused this either by choice, right. by neglect, or by ignorance. And you own it, and then right there you say, no more, and you move forward, and you start making a decision to love yourself, to release negativity, and to take responsibility for your life, and just to be happy. And just giggle. Just giggle. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. See, it just works. Giggling. I'm like, giggling away. It's about, it's the inner giggle. It's the giggle we had when we were little kids. You know, we yeah. just loved life because we were alive. Right. And we didn't need a reason to be happy. We didn't need a reason to be, to giggle and be silly. We just chose to be. Sure. I love it. That's a great yeah. choice to make. Yeah, yeah. David, you're a fascinating guy. Thanks. I love this. Uh, Dancing with Vampires is out, available very soon. I know Footsteps After the Fall is available. Uh, if our viewers could look one place to find you, where would it be? DavidStrauss.com. Very easy. Yes. Well, man, you're an inspiration to talk to. I love your story. And Thank congratulations you. on all your success and continued success in the future. All right. Thanks. I really thanks appreciate so much, it. Thanks so David. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks.